Hey everybody, I'm really excited to get to share your guide to webinars in Microsoft Teams. In this video, we're going to cover how to set up a webinar, some of the options that you can adjust to get the best experience for your audience, and show you what the workflow looks like for you as an organizer from beginning to end. All right, we've all been waiting a long time for this feature, so let's dive right in. First, let's cover some overall requirements. The ability to create a webinar registration is available to everyone with at least an Office 365 E3, A3, business standard or higher subscription. If you have one of these licenses or higher, then the ability to add a webinar registration will be enabled by default for your tenant, but your IT administrator is able to restrict this. Microsoft Teams admins have the ability to restrict the creation of webinars and they can restrict whether or not you can make a public webinar or if you only have the ability to make them for internal attendees. So if you don't see this capability, I would recommend reaching out to your own IT staff to make sure that they don't have a Teams meeting policy in place that prevents you from making a webinar. Okay, before we get to the step-by-step -step demo, let's start with the differences between meetings, webinars, and live events in Microsoft Teams. I've already seen a lot of confusion out there about what webinars actually are within Microsoft Teams. They've made it sound like it's some separate special thing, and I think that's leading to some misinformation, and it makes it seem more complicated than it actually is. Webinars in Microsoft Teams are simply a meeting with a registration workflow in front of it. That's it. The slight shift in thinking is that strategically you're setting up a pull rather than a push. With normal meetings, you're putting people in the invitation and you're hitting send, which pushes it to their calendar directly. With a webinar, you're blocking the presenter's calendar and then you're advertising that webinar to the audience and inviting them to sign up if they're interested. If you do a good enough job selling your audience on why they would want to attend your awesome webinar, then you pull them in to sign up on your registration page. Then they'll get to add it to their calendar from the confirmation email that they receive. Other than registration, a webinar is just a typical meeting. You still have all the same functionality and interactivity that you're used to in a normal Teams meeting. Now later on we're going to cover some of the options that you can adjust to make the webinar experience better than just a vanilla meeting but those features are technically all meeting features. Live events are a different beast than meetings or webinars altogether. Live events are a broadcast solution that is designed to be a few to many experience. Audience interaction is limited to the moderated Q&A and the stage is very controlled area where the presenter gets to decide what is on screen and when that's on screen. There's also an inherent delay between what's being broadcast and what the audience sees due to the underlying broadcast technology that's designed to deliver content to audiences that can go up into the thousands. I think by the end of this video, you're gonna to come to realize that a lot of your team's live events over the past year probably could have been webinars instead if these features had been available at the time. Now that there's more control and presenter-friendly features that are coming to the Microsoft Teams meeting side of things, I think we'll naturally see people move away from live events and instead use more thoughtfully customized meetings to reach most of their needs. All right, let's jump into scheduling our webinar. Let's say that Megan Bowen is going to host a product launch for the new drone from Contoso Electronics. She's just gonna go right here to her team's calendar and then next to the new meeting button, she can click this drop down and click webinar instead. Now, here's a quick tip. If you're already setting up a new meeting and you wanna make it into a webinar, you can just click up at the top, require registration, and then you can select from that list and it turns the meeting into a webinar. Remember, a webinar is just a meeting with a registration in front of it. This new webinar button just saves you an extra click along the way. All right, so we've got our typical meeting stuff that we're gonna fill out. We can give it a name, add some presenters, select a time, and add a description. So Megan is gonna co-present with Alex Wilbur. So she's gonna add him here as a required presenter. You'll notice that since we have a webinar, we added a registration, the wording changed a little bit on this field from required attendees to required presenters. This is a helpful reminder that you're not going to be sending this meeting to your audience directly. You're going to send them the registration page so that they can sign up for the webinar and get it sent to them as a confirmation email. So we're gonna add Alex right here as a required presenter, and we're good to go there. 
One thing that you can adjust up here at the top is the visibility for the registration. We've defaulted to for everyone, but that, that works out for this because this is gonna be a public webinar. It's a product launch. We want our customers to attend that. But if this were an internal only webinar, you can click this drop down and you can select for people in your org and guests if you wanted to lock that down. Now only people who are registered in your Azure Active Directory will be able to fill out the form, not anybody in the world. This is customer public facing, so we're gonna leave it at for everyone here. Okay, we've got the basics right here, the title, the description, the time for it. We're gonna go now to view our registration form to start customizing what the attendees are gonna see when they register for the event. So we're gonna click view registration form, and then a new window comes up here, and now you'll see that we can set up the details that will be publicly facing. You'll notice that you actually have the ability to set an entirely new title, description, and even a new time for the webinar if you want to. It makes sense to just use the webinar time that, that you would set up for the meeting, but here's another idea. It's a good idea to get your presenters into the meeting early so that you can do tech checks and make sure that they don't have any questions. So you might consider setting your meeting time to be a half hour earlier than what you set on the registration time, which is the actual time you'll be presenting. Now you've blocked off the presenter's calendar to include the pre-meeting, and the attendees won't start showing up too early because their calendar will have the actual webinar time, which starts 30 minutes later. Up here at the top, let's add a banner image to put some branding on our webinar. The little pop-up right here tells you uh, what the preferred size is for your image, but you can add a larger image if you want and just drag it around within this box to make it look nice and it'll crop it down for you. So let's go ahead and do that. I've got this image right here on my desktop. I'm just gonna open that up and you'll see that it's too big. So I'm just gonna move it down slightly so I get the peak of that mountain, this nice river going through. And I'm gonna hit done and it cropped the image to be a banner at the top of my webinar. Okay, so we've got the basic info here for the title, the description, and now we wanna add some speaker biographies. Just click down here on the Add Speaker button at the bottom, and you can enter a name and a short bio for the person. So we're gonna put Alex Wilbur, and we'll say CTO, all around great guy. And then we'll add another speaker down here for Megan Fallon, hardest working person at Contoso. Okay, so we've got the speaker bios. So the only thing left to do is on the right over here, we wanna set up the questions that we wanna ask our attendees. By default, you have three fields that are required for every webinar. You got the first name, the last name, and the email address. We need to know who the person is and where to send the confirmation email when they sign up. So you also have the ability to add more questions to learn more about those that are signing up for your webinar. If I click add field right here, then you'll see that there's some recommended options already listed. So we can ask what their job title is, we can ask what company they work for, stuff like that. Honestly, I feel like organization is kind of confusing. It's Microsoft-centric terminology, and I think it makes more sense to just ask what company they're with. So I can remove this question by clicking on the little X right here, and the question goes away. We also have the ability right here to add custom questions if we want. You'll see that you can add a question that has a free text input, or you can add a question that has multiple choices and they can pick from a list. We'll do one of each kind. The first question we'll enter here is the company. So we're gonna click the input option. We're gonna enter company as the, the field that we want people to fill out, and then they'll fill out what company they're with. Next, we'll click on customer custom question, and we'll hit choice to add a multiple choice option. And we're going to add a few options. So let's go with um, how familiar are you with Contoso's uh, product offerings? And then down here we can add multiple options to this, like never 
heard of Contoso, add an option. Um, I'm aware of the products. Maybe they're an existing customer, so I have a few products already. Or down at the bottom, I'm a die-hard fan. Now that we have our perfect registration form, we'll just click Save right up here at the top corner. And right at the top, you'll also see that you, have, you can copy the registration link as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. It will save the link to my clipboard so I can go paste it later on. So we can close this window and then the last thing that we need to do is I'm actually going to adjust this time to be 30 minutes earlier. So now I have from 2.30 to 3.30 instead of from 3 to 3.30. So now Alex will come in a half hour earlier than what my attendees will be set to. And the last thing we need to do is just send off the invitation so that we block Alex's calendar for the webinar. So we click send. And that's basically all you need to make your webinar. And now we're ready to send off that link that's in our clipboard. First though, I strongly recommend that you go in and look at the meeting options to make sure that they're set the way you want. And you might consider making some changes in there. Let's take a look at how we do that. So we'll go back into the Teams calendar and we've got the webinar listed here on the calendar. We'll go into there and we'll click Edit to open up the the meeting invitation and up at the top you see that you have meeting options. If I click on that, that will open up the meeting options in my browser window. You'll notice that the presenter roles are already set up for you and that's fantastic. You want to make sure that this is set to specific people and that you have all of your presenters listed in that box so that they'll be the only ones who are allowed to um, take over screen sharing, mute other people, and do the things that presenters can do. Now, one thing that you'll notice is if you have external presenters for your webinar, you won't see them in this list and you won't be able to add them into the specific people option. That's because your company, your Azure Active Directory, may not know about that person, so it doesn't know that they're to be listed in the specific people option. What you'll need to do if you have an external presenter is they'll join the meeting and hopefully you have it set 30 minutes early so they join a little bit earlier. You'll right click on that person when they come in and you'll just click make a presenter and then they'll be able to do everything that they need to do like share their screen and do all that stuff. Another option to consider is whether or not you want the attendees to be able to unmute themselves so they can add a, ask a question verbally. With a webinar it's defaulted to not allow people to do that so a presenter would need to right click on somebody who has their hand raised and allow that person to unmute if they have a question. If the webinar is more collaborative, like you're teaching a class or something like that, you might want to set this option from no to yes, but your situation will kind of dictate what you want to do there. Another thing to consider is the um, allow meeting chat. So it's set here to in meeting only, but you can set it to enabled or you can set it to disabled depending on if you want people to be able to chat. I'm going to leave it to end meeting only and that will present, prevent people from chatting after the webinar ends. Finally, down here at the bottom, I can choose whether or not to allow reactions. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave that set to on so that people can share their reactions like a thumbs up or a heart or a laughing reaction, more things like that. And that kind of energizes the presenter to see how, how people are reacting to the message. Uh, down here at the bottom, we're going to click Save to save any changes that we made, and then we're all good to go. Now that we're done setting up the webinar, it's time to share the registration link. You can send this link using an email marketing platform, post it to a Yammer community, you can send it in a Teams channel, or whatever you typically use to advertise these types of things. It's just a URL to a website. If you need to go in and get the registration link, that's really easy to, to find in the meeting invite. All you do is, again, you go to your Teams calendar, you find the, the meeting slot for that time that the webinar is, you open it up, and then at the top you'll have Copy Registration Link. You can click on that, and then that will copy it to your clipboard so you can take it over to your marketing platform and send off the, um, the invitation to register. 
So what does it look like when somebody from the audience goes to sign up for the webinar? Well, I've got a private browser here and I'm going to go to the registration page. I'm not logged into any kind of Microsoft account or anything like that. I'm going to enter my personal email address and other information and we'll just go ahead and sign up for this webinar. Once I finish registering, I get this confirmation page thanking me for signing up and letting me know that an email confirmation is on the way. So let's head on over to my personal email inbox on iCloud and see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm in my email and there's a confirmation email from the Microsoft Team Service letting me know that I signed up for this webinar and I can click the join event if I want to immediately jump into the webinar. That would be if I happen to sign up for the webinar last minute, like the event is live or I'm leading up to it. But I'm a better planner for that, so I'm going to add it to my calendar instead. You'll notice that there's an attachment right here on this email. Just like any other major webinar platform, this email includes a calendar attachment, so I can open that up and add it right to my personal calendar. Now my calendar will remind me when the webinar is about to start and give me information to click to join that webinar. If an attendee needs to cancel their registration, that's easy to do too. You can click the cancel button right here on the confirmation email, or there's a cancel button available within the webinar's um, calendar event that's on your calendar. And when you click on that link right there, it will open up this confirmation page right here that says, hey, you've canceled your registration. Click here to cancel it, and now it's canceled. So it's going to go ahead and send me an email telling me that I canceled my registration. Okay, let's say the organizer of the webinar needs to cancel it out from everybody. There's no worries about that. Each attendee that is registered for the webinar will receive an email from Microsoft Teams letting them know that the webinar was canceled. So what happens if the webinar gets moved? Again, the registrant will receive an email notification from Microsoft Teams, and this email will include a new calendar attachment for the new date and time. For our last demo, let's take a look at how we can see who has signed up for the webinar. You do this by downloading the registration report. To get there, again, go to your Teams calendar, and then you're going to open up the webinar. So I'm going to click on it, click the little arrow to open it up, and then down in the middle, you see this button for registration with a little download arrow. We're going to click on that and that's going to download a CSV file. Now we open up this CSV, it's going to open up in Outlook and we'll see that we have a few pieces of detail that kind of help us out. We get the total times that the registration page was viewed, we see each of the folks who have registered, and we see a master count of the participants. You'll see that this is zero right now because this person has signed up but then they canceled. So they're not counting towards the total list of active participants. For each participant, we see the email address and also any questions that they answered along the way, including the custom questions that I set up in the registration form. For the status column here, it lets you know if they're currently signed up or if they canceled their registration. I signed up and then I canceled out from the registration. After this webinar is over, you'll also be able to download the attendee report to see who actually attended the event and how long they were there. Pretty soon, we're going to have this new attendee engagement dashboard that will be a tab at the top of the meeting invite. This is going to bring that registration and the attendance information together so you won't have to compare multiple CSV files and you won't have to download files. It'll be just inside of the Teams interface as well. All right, that's it. You're now equipped with what you need to start doing webinars in Microsoft Teams today. If you have any questions or thoughts, let me know in the comments below. And there's a ton more enhancements coming to the webinar experience, so be sure to subscribe so that you can continue to get the latest information about all the great things that they're doing in Microsoft Teams. As always, thanks for watching.